course, it's Ryan Bader. Um, he's got Phil Davis coming up, uh, Bellator 180, but it's right before the Bellator um, pay-per-view card. Yep. Now, we, we were talking this before we started recording. It's actually better for you to be the main event on the TV portion than it is for you to be on the pay-per-view, right? Yeah. Yeah, for me, you know, with my uh... – with my contract and whatnot, you know, I, I get different bonuses and, and uh, you know, if it, if it hits a certain amount of viewership on TV, um, gate bonuses and whatnot. And so okay. for me, it's uh, it's a lot better for me to be on Spike TV. And so um, the way it's explained to me is there's two different shows, basically, Bellator 180, where the main event of Bellator 180, then they go on and move on to the pay-per-view portion. Which, uh, you know, I think it's going to do really well, but I feel like there's going to be a lot more eyeballs on the on the Spike TV, you know, uh, portion of it. So, it works out for me. I get to fight early in, yeah. the, uh, in the night. You know, it's it's East Coast, so that pay-per-view is going to be going on at 2 a.m., you know, so. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's, and there's always more eyeballs on the, on the, the free portion or the, the, you know, basic cable portion yeah. of anything. There's always you're looking at millions of millions of, of eyeballs versus maybe a few hundred thousand or under a million exactly. you know, for sure. So it, it kind of depends. So it's a good spot for you. Um, oh yeah. Is is this is this pay better than this format potentially is better than what you were getting before? Oh, a ton. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not to go into numbers or anything. Yeah. But, you know, you know, three times was getting from UFC, so. And it's, uh, I got a great contract with them. And so for me, it was about, not only that, it was about opportunity and mm-hmm. whatnot. And so, I mean, look, yeah. look, I'm fighting in uh, Madison Square Garden for the title yeah. over here. So uh, I'm, I'm super excited. All right. Well, it's obviously wrestler versus wrestler. Um, um, 15 years ago, this would kind of be a boring matchup because it's wrestler versus mm-hmm. wrestler. Like, who cares? But now in today's game, yes, you both are wrestlers. That's how you guys got to the dance. But you both yep. know how to box. You both know how to, how to work submissions. Obviously, you're a better um, uh, guy on top than than uh, uh, than Phil is, but he's also got a lot longer reach when he's on top. So it's got the, a nullifying game. Yeah. Um, you've obviously been watching Phil for a long time. I mean, even when he was wrestling at Penn State, you still knew about Phil as he was yep. coming through. How do you break this fight down? How how do you see him? Okay, don't don't break yourself down. Break down Phil. What yeah. what what are you looking at getting ready for this fight? You know, I've been in there before with him. You know, we, I beat him in a close fight. You know, he was, uh, um, you know, that was two years ago. Mm-hmm. I just believe I've grown a lot more than he has since then, you know, um, you know, physically with my techniques and mentally. Uh, for him, you know, he comes in, he's he's awkward. I remember him being awkward in there. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he really doesn't engage too much. If he does engage, it's off a, like a faint, like a faint shot or a kick. You know, he'll yeah. try to take you down off kicks. He, he likes to keep that, that distance because he doesn't want to be in that boxing range, you know. And so right. um, he doesn't really like to get hit, you know. And uh, if, if the game plan's not working for him, you know, he, he kind of uh, – uh, he gets sporadic. You know, if you look at the wrestlers he's fought, you know, from Rashad um, to me to Anthony Johnson, you know, he's had trouble. He's had trouble with them, you know. And so yeah. um, for me, it's it just – it's going in there and taking what I've learned from last fight and then – What's changed with me is, I, I mean, I, I've started to drill a ton. We got new coaching staff in there, you know, and it's just uh, one of those things where um, kind of a student of the game now, whereas before we're just, you know, some tough guys going out there and, yeah. and, and fighting, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You uh, uh, you went, obviously want to split decision over Phil um, back then, and he and he really hasn't adapted that that style much in the last two years. He's still, yeah. um, it looks on TV at least, it looks like he's scared to get hit. So he does stand on the outside. He, he does have that long range. He was able to shoot from far away and catch most guys with it. Obviously the theory is it won't work on you because of your wrestling background. You'll, you'll see that shot coming from such a far distance away. Mm-hmm. But I want to back up for a second. You said, a, you said you have a new coaching staff. What's new about your coaching staff? Yeah, we just brought in, um, we kind of needed a, like a, a head, all around head coach. And we brought in uh Jair Lorenco Rochelle from Brazil. Oh. Um, you know, he, he's uh, you know, he's awesome. He's a uh, Hannah Brown's coach, so Hannah yeah. training with us now. You know, oh, wow. so uh, he's he was under uh, Penn and Ares. He was yeah. uh, Penn and Ares right hand man. No, so we've uh, I've, I've learned a ton. I mean, every yeah. practice instead of just going in there and, and warming up and going live, you know, we're, we're having two hour drill practice and all. You know, so it took some use to getting used to it at the beginning. Yeah. But now, man, I, I can tell you my, my game has gone up so much. And I actually uh, flew in 
you know, I, I've always worked with different striking coaches, but uh, you know, he came in and, and he was asking if I knew anybody that I, you know, I, I wanted to work with and I haven't worked with for this fight. And, and uh, he said, give me a couple of days, came back and uh, flew this guy out from Brazil. Brazil, um, all those worked with him, all these guys, and, and man, he's he's changed the changed the game for me too. He come he came with a whole notebook of notes on Phil Davis, and we just been drilling and game planning. He's great too. So it's been one of those camps where everything's come together. It, it which is which is weird because that's not the report we're getting from Novinial down in Brazil. The report we're getting from from Brazil is that they go and they warm up and they and they beat each other up, and that's why a lot of the fighters were leaving yeah. the camp because they were yeah. getting hurt, and they're like, I can't be here anymore because I. I can't compete. We kind of saw that with Jose Aldo when he fought McGregor in that 13-second loss. He kind of looked like there was something a little off. And then we yep. just saw, of course, we just saw the Max Holloway fight where he got, he basically got, you know, he was winning the first round, um, kind of coming back through. And then, of course, Max TKOs him. But you're telling me the coach, like his, the right-hand man has moved to Arizona and it's drill practices. It's not live goes. Is that something yeah. different than what he was doing in Brazil? And he's trying to, he's trying to adapt as well as a coach? Or is that what he was doing down in Brazil, and the guys just didn't grab onto it? You know, I think uh, I think a little bit of both, because you know, I, that's what I was, my concern was when he came up, and we gave him kind of a little tryout, complete tryout. It was that it's just one of those things where we're going to spar four times a week. You know, um, he came up and and uh, with all the drilling, it was almost like, man, this is a lot of volume, you know. But uh, yeah. um, he's even approached me and said, hey, you know, because uh, we got Henan Brown training for his camp in end of July here, and he's yeah. like, man, you know. I really like because we have other coaches like Jason Caymans is my uh, strength coach that kind of puts a uh, uh, is also a kind of a, a liaison where he say hey these guys are doing too much or whatnot um, but he's back to him and Burrell because Burrell used to do that yeah. all the time he, and and now he's pulling back doing a lot of drilling and he's feeling great and so the coach kind of came up you know we we're talking about that and he said yeah you know I've never really noticed or believed in how much. You know, uh, if you're overtrained, it's going to affect you and, and the importance of rest and all that. So he's kind of learning as we're going. But one okay. thing he did, he did bring in was was a tech, you know, techniques across the board. You know, he's a high level black belt. Yep. He's a good striker. He's a good game planner. And so that was something that that I haven't really seen before. And so you you said it's the best training camp you've had in a really long time. You, your body feels right. Your mind's right. I mean, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just one of those things where, like, knock on wood, as of right now, you yeah. know, in training camp, you usually have a little, you know, dinger on your shin or a toe or something. Like, I feel great right now. There's not one thing I can complain about. And uh, it, I'm in great shape. You know, I, I put in everything. I put in my uh, uh, my cardio. I put in my, my sparring time. You know, now it's kind of time we're winding down a little bit. We're yep. two weeks out. Um, short, intense workout. But it's just one of those things where I'm in a good place mentally. I don't know if it's refreshing because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm switching organizations. I'm excited about it. You know, finding Madison Square Garden. You know, haven't yeah. fought this too much. You know, just everything, a little combination. And then alone, you know, I'm not one of those guys that, like, puts the pressure on, like, this is title fight. But a little extra motivation, too. You know, because every fight you go into, you're putting pressure on yourself to go out there and win and, and whatnot. But... Um, there's a little more motivation in this one. Well, you, you haven't fought since November 2016. This is going to be June 24th before you get in there. So just about seven months. Are you trying to get back into it again? Like, depending on how the, obviously no injuries, everything goes your way. Are you going to try and get one more or two more in in the rest of this year? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll at least get one more. Okay. You know, that's uh, something I have in my contract, too, is, uh, is kind of an inactivity clause. So I, I need to be fighting, you know, and uh, – good. Um, yeah, I'd love to get at least at least two more before June, you know, so I, I'd rather rack them up. You know, I want to go out there, win this belt, and uh, fly through my contract as fast as I can and sign another one. That's awesome. That That's a um, – and, and so can you say how many how many fights you have left in your contract, or is that something you want well, to – Well, it was a six-fight contract, a two-year okay. six-fight contract, yeah. Okay, so you'll, you end up fighting three times each year then, you know, yep. within, the, within – that's perfect. And, and I like that. It's perfect for me, you know uh, – uh, I could fight four, you know, I do like kind of a back-to-back -back fight, you know, a good turnaround if I'm already in shape, but three fights is perfect for me. It allows you to kind of get that mental rest and then get back in there um, and train like you need to train in a training camp because if you're fighting all the time, it gets hard to keep that high level of training the whole time. All right. I got to, I got to ask you a few things about the rest of this card. Um, Mid versus Fedor. What do you, what do you think? You know, I got Mitri on on this one. He's too long. He's lanky. He's going to be smart here. You know, I see uh, 
I see Fedor kind of coming in with big looping punches, you know, when he's when he's fresh, and Mitrione just sipping a jab in his face, sipping a right hand, and, and uh, you know, I see it be one of those fights where Mitrione actually TKOs him. That that same feeling, yeah, that's that's kind of my yeah. feeling on it too. Uh, uh, Sonnen and, and Silva. Yeah, that, that that one's a tough one to call. You know, I don't know where their both their heads are at. You know. Um, I know, I know Silva's always going to have that killer instinct. He's going to go in there, but uh, I got to go with Sun and he's at any point, I believe he can go in there and take him. And that's where he's comfortable. If he's on top of somebody, he's going to be fine. It doesn't matter if he's trained at all or not and is in shape or not. Sun is going to be fine on top. It's a three-round fight. You know, he's, he can go in there and take him down once around and be on top of him. It's funny. I already interviewed Chael, and he said that uh, um, he's trained really hard for this fight. He's really dedicated to training and and cut back a lot of his other duties that he's supposed to do. That yeah. Really. But he's also said, and this is him saying it, this isn't me, he says, admittedly, I have trained hard for other fights and then left all the skills in the locker room and got out there and got my ass kicked. And that's just kind of, he's like, just, he goes, I don't know what it is about myself, but sometimes when I don't train and don't try hard to get ready for a fight, I actually do better because I, I it's don't There's less care. pressure. Yeah. Yeah, it's less pressure on you. And you go out there and you're like, well, if I can win and not train, <laughs> And here we go. So I'm going to try to do that. You know, yeah. and if you put a lot of pressure, if you're in tip top shape and you're the, you feel the best going in, you know, you might have a little more pressure on yourself. So I, I get that logic. Yeah. He's uh he really hates like him and Silva have real heat. Like they really hate each other. It's a, yeah. it's a big deal. Do you need that motivation when you're fighting somebody? Like, do you need to hate them or is it like, no. is it, Not have, for you, me. have you ever hated anybody that you fought? Has there been any heat between you and anybody else? Like real heat? No, no. Okay. No, it's always always been respectful, pretty much mm-hmm. for the most part. And so for me, it's just going in there. It's almost competing. You know, I could care less what the emotions are involved. And I try, I try to stay calm in there. As soon as I start getting amped up and whatnot, um, I start overthinking, and uh, I I gotta be calculated in there. So there's, I, I try not to bring any emotions there. All right, last question before I let you out of here. What what movie did you see with the kids today? Cars. I saw Captain Underpants. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was when you. Yeah, when you... When you texted me and said, I'm going to the movies, I said, oh, he's going to see Cars 3. I, I bet you that's what he's going to see. No, yeah, Captain Underpants. There we go. So, yeah, I have three young kids, all under five. So, uh, we brought them some of their friends. And uh, actually, it wasn't bad. So, get a little uh, family time on the weekends. And uh, yeah. I'll be leaving here soon. So, get it in. When, when do you take off? you take off a full week before the fight to, to go to it, New York? It's just like UFC. Uh, okay. It'll be that Tuesday before. So okay. take off that Tuesday. We'll stay a couple of days extra because I have, you know, my wife's coming out there, some, uh, some family and friends. So enjoy it a little bit in June in uh, New York. So um, week before, but I'm ready to go yeah. now. So this is a week you kind of wait around and wondering if you're doing too much, too little, all that kind of stuff. I, I did say last question with the, with the movie thing, but, yeah. but do you do – you, um, do you find it hard now because it is all drill? Like it's been a lot of hard drilling sessions, and now it's two weeks before, and you're ready. Like you said, now is it hard for you to like go into practice and realize, okay, I got to back off a little bit. I can't go a yeah. thousand miles an hour. Yeah, that was always a problem that I had. Okay, you know, I think in the earlier part of my career, I paid for it because I would be one of those guys. You know, the wrestling mentality: you go in, you yeah. spar five rounds with new guys, you're tired, you wonder why. You bring three more guys to spar right after you know and it just it was dumb you know so for me if my body starts feeling down i gotta take that time off and uh, okay. same with this week I, I have to you know uh the coaches are good at, you know about you know i'll say yeah let's go in there and, and hit mitts or whatever and do whatever five rounds or whatnot and then i'm feeling awesome so i want to do more they're it's their job right there and they will to step in and be like no nope, you're done go home come back tomorrow we're just wow. doing one day now you know so um but that's what i need I'll, I'll yeah. be in there too much, if so. Well, that's great, Ryan. I'm, I'm glad things are going so well for you now, and I am super excited to see you fight again. I, I was Thank kind you. of missing your, missing your game out there and, and, the, and the, the real business attitude you have towards fighting. You have a real business sense about it where you're like, look, it's not – I don't need to hate anybody. I'm just going out there to have another no, – yeah, exactly. I'm trying to, trying to get paid. And when we get done, if, you know, I win, I'll buy him the beer. If he wins, exactly. he buys me a beer, and that's it. Like, we don't care anymore. I think, you know, I've had – Almost 28 fights, you know, yeah. in the UFC and elsewhere, and they, most of the UFC and top level, and I've never had that that time in a fight where I, I felt that. So every time yeah. afterwards, it's it's all friendly, it's all good, it's just competing, getting a paycheck, and having fun. That's awesome. I can't wait to watch you. Good luck, man. Have a good rest Thanks, of your training camp. We'll talk later. Yes, sir. Thank you. You got it.